Right next to He's hitting the phones alongside his cabinet. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn's addressing the masses in Wales. And Joe Swinson's Liberal Democrats are rolling into key marginals. We're going to stop Brexit! Yeah! The last week of campaigning has begun, but is it all still to play for, or has the nation already decided? A YouGov poll for the Sunday Times suggests so, putting the Conservatives 10 points ahead of Labour and predicting a majority of 38 seats. Tory ministers, however, say the race is still on. Are you home and dry now, Mr Lewis, or, uh, or are you still worried about a hung parliament? I'm worried about every single vote. I think it's always important that we work hard to earn the vote of everybody. We're asking people to take time out on a December day to come and vote. We want them to do it for positive reason, to help the Conservatives get a majority, to get Brexit done, deliver for our economy, and every vote matters. There's like a that. couple of big beasts that are looking in danger. Every Ian Duncan single, Smith, every Dominic single, Robb. Every single vote matters, every seat matters, and there is always... I've seen people at local elections win and lose by three votes and the drawing of cards. Every vote matters. Caution from the Cabinet but not from the pollsters. Professor John Curtis believes there's almost no chance of a Labour win, a 30% chance of a hung parliament, and as much as a 70% chance of a Conservative majority. But we have to bear in mind that Boris Johnson has to win this election. No other party in the House of Commons is willing to support his withdrawal treaty. So if he's going to get it through, he has to get a majority. Just relatively small movements in the course of the next few days could make a crucial difference. Would we be looking at hung parliament territory? Yeah, at those point, at that, at those point we'd be looking at a hung parliament territory. Um, and the point is that once we get into hung parliament territory, the government will, won't be able to get its withdrawal treaty through probably. And fairly soon when we enter that territory, we get into a situation where we would have a majority of MPs in favour of a second referendum and therefore potentially a change of government, albeit a deeply minority Labour administration. That's an assessment the Shadow Chancellor disagrees with. A lot of people that we talk to, traditional Labour voters, say the problem that they've got is Jeremy Corbyn. What do you say to those voters this week? It's interesting because when Jeremy debated with Boris Johnson on Friday, you saw that he had a huge majority when it came to trustworthiness, huge majority amongst people about understanding our problems. I think that will translate itself into votes on Thursday. The more people see Jeremy Corbyn, without reading some of the rubbish in the newspapers, the more support we get. If there is a clear Conservative win this week, will you and Mr Corbyn resign? There won't be a clear Conservative win, there'll be a Labour majority. At the beginning of this election, much of the online messaging from political groups instead of parties focused on tactical voting. Professor Curtis says the scale of tactical voting needed now to shift the dial would be huge. It, let's say for the purposes of argument, the Tories are at the moment heading for 345. So might be tactical voting gets it down to 330, which would be close enough for the Conservatives, but it will also still be good enough. If the election does go the way the polls predict, that means a tougher time ahead for the SNP. Her help and a hung parliament, a gateway to a second independence referendum. But if he does get that majority, what happens then? I tell you what, I'll come back and talk to you. If, if we're in that scenario, but I'm going to focus all of my energies over the next few days and trying to make sure it's not Boris Johnson walking through the doors of Downing Street on Friday morning. And when you're asked again about whether or not you would go into coalition with Jeremy Corbyn, what will you be saying now? Because that's going to switch I, off a lot of voters. Well, I'll, I'll say what I've said before. The SNP will not go into coalition with Labour or anybody. Uh, we want to, though, lock the Tories out of government. So if there is an opportunity for a progressive alliance to achieve that, the SNP will be part of it, but be progressive policies that we're pushing. With four days to go, the cautious Conservative message for the final furlong. Of course, the horses can still change places. And from Labour... We're going to do it, OK! The race, they say, is not yet over. And Paul is with me now. So, Paul, we've heard plenty of promises, plenty of predictions. What can we expect in the next few days? Well, rather unsurprisingly, we can expect to see a lot more of the leaders over the next couple of days. So, Jeremy Corbyn today, he did three campaign events. I think he's doing four tomorrow. Boris Johnson, he's going to be in five seats tomorrow. And, you know, but, you know, well, that's, what's, that's what you'll see at events. I think what most voters will see is they will see a big increase in online campaigning. We've got a taste of that. Yesterday, the Conservatives bought the, the, the most expensive advert on YouTube yesterday, and that's just going to ramp up over the next few days. So for context, in 2017, the Conservatives spent £2.1 million on digital advertising. During this election, now while Labour has been spending consistently quite a bit, the Conservatives, they haven't been spending that much. The suggestion there would be that there's going to be a big push this week. Now, we've seen this before, and we've seen it work well. Where? The referendum. 
In 2016, Vote Leave, in the last week of campaigning, on Facebook and on digital ads, they spent £1.5 million. So expect to see more. Well, we're going to stay tuned for that one. Thanks so much, Paul.